It's a great question and many components to, um, to this question. I think the first one um, is why are we looking at mental health? Um, we need to think about health in its broader sense. Uh, traditionally, uh, a lot of organizations have thought about health in the physical health type of way, which makes great sense. Um, and in the recent years, we've been adding mental health and we're also adding financial health. So really these three pillars, and there are many others really, but if we were to start with the main three, I would start with physical, mental, and financial health. And so it's important to think about them together. And I'll get to uh, mental health specifically, but it's important to start there um, because these three areas of our health impact each other, right? They're all related. We know that from makes sense to most people, but it also is established in the academic literature. So whatever we do to help with one area of health is going to have positive impact very likely on others. Another good reason to think about all three areas of health at the same time is that not only they interact with each other, but whatever we do to help these areas will also impact other areas and sometimes more than one. So for example, and we'll talk about mindfulness later today, it hits more than one area of health in a very positive way. Um, and then finally, another very practical reason why looking at all areas of health uh, together makes sense is that most organizations will have some beginning of structure related to physical health. And if we're able to incorporate and tie with this, then mental health is not going at it on its own. So first, need to look at all three areas of health together. Second, why do we need a strategy? And really, what usually happens is organizations have goals. They want healthy workforce for all all the good reasons um, that, that exist there. And so if we have this goal and all we do is apply programs, we're at risk of doing what sometimes we've, and I'm sure you've heard this, that the random acts of wellness, where it's good, it's all happening, but it's not necessarily moving the organization in their, their, the direction they want. And that's what a strategy does, right? I know that some, some people on, on the call are from larger organizations. So you've seen this, um, some of this, and some are from smaller organizations. Um, and I guess I've actually seen in either large or small organizations, some, some individuals not necessarily um, aware, um, but there is, wait a second, I need to minimize this too. Okay. So, one uh, another reason to have a mental health strategy, few pieces there. One is we're seeing in most organizations an increasing rate of mental health challenges. And that leads to all kinds of, of things. We'll talk about uh, measures, but it can lead to absence, uh, casual absence, can lead to short-term disability claims, long-term disability claims. And if we're looking, um, and there's been public information about uh, rates of uh, long-term disability rates for insurance carriers, related to mental health. And that average right now is at 30%. So that means 30% of all long-term disability claims in all organizations are for mental health first diagnostic. And that means this is average. This means for some organizations it's at 20 and for some organizations it's at 60. Right? So there is that range. It's not all everyone's hovering around 30. So it's fairly significant, especially for some organizations. The other reason why it, it is important um, is the Mental Health Commission of Canada issued the National Standard on Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace in 2013. Um, and we'll talk about the factors a bit later, but basically this standard has put mental health on the map of all Canadians in many areas, but certainly um, of employers in a very significant way. And there is great research to show the positive impacts of taking care of mental health. Just a few more points still, um, if, if, if I can, because it's sure. broad and, and there are many great aspects and, and not all these things will speak to each or, uh, organization in the same way, but another one are generations in our workplace. Um, most organizations will have millennials as the, at least 50% of their employee population by 2020, which is right around the corner. That's a generation that has characteristics that are different from other generations. We actually know that from research. But one of the things is that they value health and they value balance. And as they become a majority in our workplaces, that's the population to make sure we pay attention to. And that's not the only generation. We also have an aging workforce, right? Individuals staying even longer in the workplace. And these people too will need even more attention to their health. So that's another one. And of course, there is the social responsibility. It's always a, a good um, reason to do this. But also the other piece I would add now in 2018 that, that's, that's been there for those organizations that have already been on the path is that many organizations are realizing that they need to either in addition or 
um, take a different direction, in addition to their broad brush, perhaps approach, they need to look at more specific, more specific actions, more specific groups within their organizations. And it ties to this increased interest in data analytics and measurement and all this. And the more you're specific, the more you can actually get to this.